All right, welcome back. Back with a quick little news of the day video here for you guys. We have a lot to talk about today, but before I get into it, I just want to remind you guys that I uploaded my power rankings, uh, the first edition in quite a long time now that the second tour has started yesterday. And so if you want to check that out, it's my most recent upload. But without further ado, uh, let's get into it. So uh, we've had a lot going on today when it comes to client issues actually affecting teams that we're supposed to play today. Saturday is usually the busiest day of Dota where we have six matches spanned across three regions, those being Southeast Asia, Western Europe, and then finally North America. And right now we should be in the midst of our fourth series, which should have been OG versus Liquid, but we have only played two series as of right now, and I'll get into why. So the first of which uh, being between Boom and Nigma Galaxy, which unfortunately ended up with a forfeit uh, from Boom Esports to Nigma Galaxy. And this was due to a technical issue, which players and management from the team have both come out on Twitter and tried to explain the situation where they were trying to connect with only a few minutes leading up to the actual game start and they were having difficulty, whether that was actual difficulty connecting to the lobby or just the client having some sort of issue, they weren't able to connect. And so they were trying to find a way that they could maybe rent a car or call a cab to get the team to an internet cafe where they could maybe hopefully play a series out at the internet cafe, which unfortunately that plan fell through as well and right as things actually started to work on their end when it came to connecting or launching the client there was a dota update which unfortunately ended up taking too long and they ended up missing the cutoff time for this series and bts beyond the summit the tournament organizers for the region had to step in and issue this forfeit just due to the protocol and so this was completely out of Nigma Galaxy's hands. It wasn't them that called for this or anything like that. This was just BTS stepping in and making an executive decision, which is unfortunate. Uh, again, Boom Esports, it's a tough break in a, in a division that I've already been talking about is so difficult. Uh, making it to the top three is gonna be super tough. And with this loss already on the record, they're gonna have a lot of ground to make up, especially since Nigma Galaxy, I think it's fair to say is one of the weaker teams in this division. So. Boom is going to have to show that they're going to be able to beat all of the better teams in this division to make top three from here, which really sucks. But on the bright side, for a team like Nigma Galaxy, who started off 0-1, this is a pretty lucky break. I talked about it in my power rankings yesterday. They started off 0-1 with that loss to Polaris, and then their next two series were going to be against Boom and T1. So it felt kind of unlikely that Nigma Galaxy was going to have the best start ever, but they get themselves a win. Whether it's an authentic one or not, a win is a win. So unfortunate news for Boom, but this unfortunately had to happen and then moving on with the day of course this was the last series in southeast asia we had our series in western europe uh, between both brain and uh, gaming gladiators that went completely smoothly no technical issues there and right as we were getting to start this og liquid series there were delays, which, you know, is pretty typical if a series is running a little bit late uh, due to the one being before it going a little bit late as well. But the first series ended just in about like two and a half hours. So there really shouldn't have been any sort of delay here. And about after half an hour of the expected start time, uh, we got word from Shiver, who was on the panel, that this series was going to be postponed due to a game breaking bug in the client. Whether or not that was the same bug that was affecting Boom earlier today, it clearly has affected both teams enough uh, for this series to get postponed. It wasn't like just one of these teams wasn't able to show up. And that's all we know for now. We do not have a date on when this match is gonna be taking place. So as of right now, no more matches in Western Europe. And hopefully, we're just a couple hours away now from the matches in North America starting. Hopefully this bug can get fixed before then because evidently whatever this bug is, is too much for teams to be playing through. So hopefully Valve is on the case and that we can end up having the rest of our series for today because usually Saturday is one of the funnest days to watch Dota and we really haven't all had all that much. So again, we'll see how this goes. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. And again, links to everything I talked about in the description down below. Uh, next up, something I wanted to talk about, something I usually wouldn't talk about, and that is just some kind of drama revolving around the talent list that was revealed for the ESL1 uh, Stockholm Major, which was, of course, taking, near the, uh, taking place near the end of May. That's going to be including a crowd. It's going to be the Major for the end of the second tour. And they have released their list of major talent, and there's been quite a lot of criticism about it, and not necessarily in the way that you would expect. It's not just because, you know, certain players were left out, etc., etc. It's because certain 
talent from certain regions were left out, particularly every other region other than North America and Western Europe were just completely excluded from this talent list. Now, this list is still fantastic, and it just goes to show how deep the pool of talent is around the Dota, Dota 2 Pro scene and how lucky we are to have so many of these people around the scene. Uh, the hosts for the tournament are going to be Shiver, Perion, Flax, and Siraction Slax. Uh, we have Odie, Pixel, and Fog, Suns, Fan, and Sindarin, and Moxie, and Purge, who are going to be coming in and casting. And they're not obviously going to be the only casters. It's possible that we have more casters, especially from this analyst list, uh, consisting of SVG, FE, T Governor, Jenkins, and Lacoste. Again, all of those talent members are part of the Western European and North American DPC, which makes sense because when you think about it, ESL1 is the one hosting this tournament. They are also currently hosting the North America DPC, and they also share a studio with Dream League right now who is hosting the Western Europe DPC. So because they share a same studio, because they share a lot of the same talent, it makes sense that they would strictly pick from players and talent that they have already been working with. However, again, for a major that's not going to be including just those regions, it feels a little unfair that they're not going to be bringing in some talent members from those regions, bringing, not bringing in any talent members that are familiar with these teams that are going to be participating in the major. Um, some notable ones that I thought of off the top of my head that didn't get an invite that I was very surprised to not even hear mentioned. Uh, Lizard, for one. We have B-Cop. Gareth, who I thought has been fantastic this past year. I was really glad that he got to cast at TI. Uh, even though Lacoste is there, who's usually his uh, casting duo, uh, he is not going to be there. Uh, Black Black, Lyrical, and Trent were not invited. Uh, Bowie in South America, who I thought has been fantastic. He's really made the South American streams really, really fun to watch on the English side of things. Uh, we have John X Fire, who in Southeast Asia has been fantastic. And Cap, who was not invited apparently, which is, again, a little surprising. So... I would love to hear you guys' thoughts about this. Again, this isn't the most outraging thing. When you think about why they pick these talent members, it makes sense. It's people that they have already hired as of right now. But again, for a tournament that's going to be hosting more than just one region, more than just two regions, every single region in the DPC, I feel like it would make a little bit more sense to have talent members who have been a part of those other regions throughout this past DPC year. But uh, either way, I would love to hear you guys' opinion in the comments down below. All right, and now moving on to some more team-based things. First little bit of news is that Vici Gaming has very recently kicked Irving from their roster to bring in Yang, uh, who has been on a little bit of a break. He hasn't played since the dissolvement of Elephant, which obviously was a roster of fantastic players that just never really came together fully and never really lived up to the expectations that they had for themselves. But I still thought there was a lot of individual skill on that team. They just didn't really mesh. And we've seen that in a lot of players that have had a lot of success since then. Uh, players that people thought were washed to this point. For example, Somnus and Paparazzi, who was absolutely popping off after TI-10. So it's nice to see that he's going to be on this team. For Irving, we have not heard what he's going to be doing, if he's going to be joining another team right now. Again, we're in the middle of the tour, so it's a little bit hard to find a team that is actually in contention for a major slot that is open right now. But uh, for Vici Gaming, because they make this change, they lose 15% of their points, which only ended up being 30 points that they earned in the first tour. So they lose themselves four and a half points, which overall is not all that bad. So... We'll see if this change ends up helping Vici going forward. I thought that their first few series have been fantastic. Even though they lost that one at PSG OGD, there was a lot to take away from that series. There was a lot of highlights, specifically game two, where they pretty much handled PSG LGD. And then their series that they played afterwards against LBZS was fantastic. And that was also the first series that they had Yang on their roster. So we'll see if they're able to improve from here. But uh, I have some pretty reasonable expectations for VG Gaming at this point. They could very likely be a top four team now. Again, Tour 1 was kind of disappointing. We'll see. And uh, some final news here coming out from Quincy Crew, more specifically Ponlo, who uh, if you guys watched their first series up against Wildcard, uh, where they won 2-0, the, Ponlo was not in that match. He was actually being standed in by uh, MSS at the time, and he has come out on Twitter and mentioned that he is very, very likely going to be missing out on Quincy Crew's next series as well, that being against four Zoomers on Tuesday. As of right now, no mention as who that stand-in is, but very likely it is going to be MSS. It seems like right now MSS is the stand-in for every single Single team that needs a stand-in in North America. Uh, Evil Geniuses had him in for like three or four series when Nightfall was out and uh, it just goes to show how you know 
I think underrated MSS is. I was surprised he didn't get picked up, but also how versatile he is. He played off lane for AG. He looked fantastic. Now he's playing support once again for Quincy Crew. So we'll see how it goes from here. But anyways, yes, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think about anything I talked about in the, in the comments down below. Links for everything I talked about in the description down below as well. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be having my preview for the lower division week two going up tomorrow, as well as my fantasy picks. So if you don't want to miss that, feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.